share some of my tips and techniques in using mermaid markers and my ink brushes which are basically an empty mermaid marker <laughs> so mermaid markers are full of a really vibrant dye based ink that is water soluble and I've also just filled up my ink brush and with water and I'm using this to reconstitute to resuscitate and to spread some of that ink around and the solubility of the ink that's already there depends on the paper how long it's been drying uh, and that is something fun for you to experiment with with the pushing or where it says push on the barrel you can squeeze it more as you're going to get more ink to flow to drop out so that's why you just you don't need to be doing that all the time you just end up with ink flying out everywhere because you're opening up the little valve inside and getting a little spurt of ink to come through like I just did bang, bang <laughs> when I'm setting up a new brand new mermaid marker so I've washed the little tip out like I showed you in the intro and I had that little spot of ink come out. I should have done it over another page uh, or um, over that little thing of water like I did with the first one. But I left this in there so you can see that even dropping a splotch of ink in the middle of a face isn't a disaster. In fact, that happening was such a happy little accident because it really made me uh, put on much, much stronger shading from the get-go on this face and it shaped the whole thing. So even though this is just a nice little sketch, I'm just having fun in my art journal, it just added instant extra drama. I also want you to notice, look at that beautiful third color we've just mixed by putting a little bit of the turquoise, which is called Byron Bay, over the top of that incredibly vibrant pink, which is called Starfish. And then I've got this gorgeous purple. I love mixing purples and I love mixing oranges. Pink and yellow make those beautiful beautiful orange the pink and yellow in this set oh my goodness and these two colors likewise make the most beautiful purple so by working with um, an ink brush which is the empty one with a bit of water in it uh, and working with the mermaid markers I think this is like a perfect little correlation I also want to point out uh, on the paper I am working in one of the Jane Davenport hardbound art journals and on the back of the page I've got some paint and collage medium and all sorts of other things that I was experimenting with and testing and I think it has changed the pH 
of the paper. So I see how it's got that speckling. That's there. It was um, I did a, a paint pour, marbling ink. So I think it has changed the pH of the um, paper, and it's getting this speckling happening which isn't what it usually does. And when I started to see that, I thought, ooh, I don't know about that. But I've been creating art for long enough to just, if something weird happens like that or unexpected, I've more often than not lean into it because it usually means something magical is on the way. Something mag magical is about to happen as well. And... Um, yeah, so I just thought, well, that could be an interesting effect. Like I've put salt on it by the time it dries. So we'll just we'll leave it. We'll leave that. But I just wanted you to know that's what this, that sort of texture that's happening is. Oh, that purple. And now that I've got a more intense layering of the Byron Bay and that um, gorgeous starfish, so I put a little squeeze, a little blob of that ink down. Uh, look at that. It's almost like a whole nother purple and royal blue because it's more ink there. Now I'm using my ink brush, uh, which has just got the water in it. And same thing, I can just let the water flow at that gentle pace that it'll just flow with, or I can give it a little squeeze uh, on the little areas that say push on the barrel and I can get more water to come through. Uh, and because I'm working on the paper in my journal, which is robust enough to take all of this and not peel and go too crazy uh i know that i can push the inks and add more water and have this sort of fun and by just using water and dragging a little bit of the ink across i can get some soft shadows as well so even though mermaid markers are this ultra vi a vibrant dye based ink they can also be tamed down and toned up when you add more of them, but you can also tame them with water. So I think that I mainly use them in conjunction with water. That's why they're called mermaid markers, because mermaids love water. That's when they come alive with a little bit of water. The mermaid markers are part of my Art Essentials collection. They are, they are a very important part of... <laughs> <laughs> my art supply collection and this particular color jellyfish it is a muted mauve I think you could call it it's really a bruise color honestly I think it is one of my favorite colors because they've got these super vibrant um, star colors on my page it's so nice to have some more toned down colors to add to them and jellyfish is one it's just a magical color that, and in Incredible Ink, I have Violet Syrup, which kind of does the same thing. It's a soft addition that suits just about everything else that goes with it. And it's just a quieter moment in terms of, I mean, it's still a beautiful, vivid color, but in terms of its companions in the Mermaid Marker series. So it just gives the eye a rest and I use it to sketch with. Now, when I first started the video, when I first wanted to start drawing, my natural inclination was to open up and set up this marker first because I love sketching with it. But I thought, no, I'm gonna start with the starfish with that super hot pink. Sometimes you just have to go with your intuition that is where I started. But I'm just, I'm showing you how you can layer up the colors. Um, I can puddle the colors. So I'm just squeezing on a little bit of that ink. Just, da, da, da. Um, just keep in mind, I'm just going to repeat myself. You don't need to be constantly squeezing. When you squeeze the Merbe markers, the ink will flow, the ink will come out and you can end up with a little bit of a surge if you just are pumping and squeezing it too much. Just a little, it just can flow on its own. Just when you first start it, you, you might want to give it a little bit of a squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then if you want a little bit more intensity of ink, you can do that. And this is why I love these as a watercolor marker because I can control the intensity of the ink which is especially handy when you've got really beautiful deep colors, like the one that I'm adding now, which is called Deep Sea, which is a really, really 
dark blue veering into purple. And I'm adding this to the very darkest parts of the face, to the lash line, and building up those dark lines rather than going straight in with uh, a black pen or really, really dark brown. Uh, I just, I think it's just, I'm building up just a prettier version of my deepest colors. And oh, I love how the colors of these markers, this ink, how they start to integrate and spread around uh, and play with each other. They behave differently to watercolor. They also behave differently to my incredible inks. They are a different formula, so they just behave uh, in just different ways in the ways that they work with each other. Now I'm adding some oh, opaque white paint pen. Uh, this is from my Storytime paint pens. They're such nice markers, these. And just adds a little bit of white. Now if that ink resuscitates or if it's still a little wet it will work through that ink and stain it and if you want it to retain a white white appearance then you would just come over again once it's dry what i'm also doing is just using my ink brush and taking a little bit of color so the color i'm taking from is coral so i can get a very very soft effect and i'm going to add a little bit to the cheeks just nice little soft pink cheeks there. I just want to just a subtle little wash there. So in this simple sketch I just wanted to show you how light and how dark and how much fun you can have even with just a few of the mermaid marker colors. There's 12 other colors. I have other videos showing you those and of course I will be making more videos with them. But as a sketching tool to draw with they really are a lot of fun. They uh, help you with expressive lines because of that really beautiful uh, nib. The brush nib on this is just very nice. You can go very fine, get more of a broad swathe. Ooh, and the colors, gorgeous. You can mix all sorts of other colors with them. You still got some flesh tones in there as well and you can build them up to be light or dark or anywhere in between. You can find them at janedavenport.com and other awesome retailers all around the world.